Hello everyone. Is it audible? Yes. Okay, is it audible for uh, everyone else? Yes. Yes. I think I can start the class now. Go ahead. Let me introduce myself. I am Hari, uh, Hadoop Online Trainer from Great Online Training and I am working in an MNC. So this is briefly uh, about my background. So can you please quickly introduce yourself? Hi guys, this is Bin from New Jersey. Okay. Hi Hari, this is Bindu. I live in Boston. Okay. Start here from Chicago. Okay. Hi Hari, this is Srivani from Bloomington. Okay. Yeah, hi. Hi, this is Uma from Virginia. Okay. Okay, then I'll start the class now. Is it fine, right? Yes. Yeah, proceed, please. Okay. Let me go for today's agenda. So, what is the agenda of today's demo session? Overview of course content and material in which I'll brief you about the training like how the training will be and how the course structure will be. Next, what is big data? Nowadays everyone saying that the future is big data. I'll make you understand clearly what big data is. And challenges, what are the challenges we will face while handling with the big data? And what is Hadoop? I'll give you quick introduction of Hadoop and importance of Hadoop. Why we need to use Hadoop? What is the importance of it? That I'll explain. And Hadoop ecosystem. So here I will show you all the components of Hadoop ecosystem with a simple real time example so that you can understand all the things easily. Question and answers. So at the end of the demo, you can ask whatever the questions you have. I'll answer to those questions. And that's it. This is the agenda of today's demo session. So before going with the PowerPoint presentation, let me show you the course structure or course drive. So this is how the course drive looks like. It will contain eight folders. So the first one here is sessions. So this training will consist of 30 hours of classes. That is 30 sessions. So each day is one hour class. So this is prepared for uh, weekday classes will also have weekend batches. So what these folders consist of? So every day I will explain some PowerPoint presentations or I will explain some of the programs or I, will, I might show some of the materials. So everything whatever I will show you or I will teach you in the daily sessions that will be present in these folders like PowerPoint presentations or programs or whatever the material I'll explain in that class. So this is how the sessions will be and tasks. After every day's class, I will give you some assignment which you need to finish by the next class. So if you have any doubts or questions regarding that assignment, we can discuss the same in the next class. So like uh, I will show you the assignment, one of the assignments you can uh, complete this assignment by the end of this demo session. So like what are the four V's of big data, which of the following variety of data can be big data. So these questions you can answer very easily if you listen carefully for this class.
so likewise every day i will give you some task it is not only like question and answer sir uh, it is uh, multiple answer questions so it's not only like that i might give you some programs to practice something like that so whatever i'll give you so if you finish those things it will be enough like this is the material so i have collected the best material and also i personally prepared material for some of the concept so i promise you if you follow my classes and if you are able to finish the assignments it will be enough to crack the interview or to clear the certification exams the next one is frequently asked questions so what are these frequently asked questions so these are the frequently asked questions in the interviews or some of the certification exams so i have collected these frequently asked questions from my colleagues who are working in multinational companies so hope these frequently asked questions will be helpful for you the next is certification so this folder consists uh, consists of what are the certifications you can complete after attending my classes and the certificates and also the certification exam pattern syllabus and you will have some of the certification dumps also in this folder and resumes so we have some sample good resumes and you can simply just change your name and you can upload it to your job portals as you'll have very good understanding of the concept if you want you can keep 2 to 3 years of experience and videos so what is this videos so what if you miss some of the classes or if you want to listen the classes again for this we will record every session and we'll give you give you access to these video sessions so once if you join the training you will have lifetime access for the material a uh, videos which are which you can see here you can also join with other batches if you have miss some of the classes or if you want to attend the classes again and sorry i miss this projects so at the end of the training you can select one of the projects here and you can complete that project and if you are stuck at somewhere or if you want some help from us we'll help you to complete that project so simply this is how the course drive will be let me go to the powerpoint presentation again okay so now it is whatever you do it will be getting recorded somewhere even if you chat if you talk on some call if you browse something in the internet everything will be getting recorded somewhere so where this this much amount of data is stored and if it is stored why the data is stored these are the questions so before answering the, to these questions so let me show you the world digital data so how the world di digital data is increasing i'll show you one diagram here here the memory is showing in zettabytes in 2015 the world digital data is 0.1 zettabyte and 2000 sorry in 2005 it is 0.1 zettabytes and in 2015 it is 9 zettabytes so what a zettabyte is exactly so that i will show you in this memory size chart so this memory size chart gives you all the memory uh, sizes like from minimum to maximum bits to yotta bytes as you know a gigabyte is 1024 megabytes and 1024 gigabytes is 1 terabyte and 1024 terabytes is 1 petabyte and 1024 petabytes is 1 exabyte 
and 1024 exabytes is one zettabyte so this is what the the zettabyte is what we are talking in the world digital data so a zettabyte is approximately 1 trillion gigabytes so this much amount of data like how many zeros will be there in zettabyte it is almost 22 to 24 digits will be there in zettabyte this is a zettabyte is a very huge data so let me go to the world digital data again so if you see here in 2012 the world digital data is 2.8 zettabytes and 2015 they expected that it will be 8.5 zettabytes but actually it crossed 9 zettabytes so from the past three years only it almost tripled more than triple so with this growth the people are experts are expecting that by 2020 the world digital data will be 44 zettabytes so if you show this increasing graph this is an exponential graph like the data volume in the world is increasing exponentially the blue line in the graph shows this and what is this red line so this red line is explaining the growth of structured data so what is the structured data a structured data is what the data which we can store in relational database hope you all know what a relational database is RDBMS relational database management systems so a relational database contains the data in the form of tables like rows and columns so this is what we'll call it as relational database mostly uh, I'll use this relational database or relational tables in this demo session frequently yes the structured data structured data is what you can store in relational database and unstructured data is what you can't store so this is business data structured data is business data so if you compare the unstructured data and structured data the most of the data like 80 percent of the data is unstructured data only 15 to 20 percent of the data in the world is structured data so this is how the data in the world is increasing but why people are storing this much amount of data what is the need of storing this data the answer to this question is very simple to get the insights of the data and to take necessary actions based on the results so to understand you much better I will give you a simple example let us consider a small grocery shop so what the shopkeeper is doing so initially just uh, a few days back he opened the shop and he bought all the products whichever he want to sell and he kept all the products in a random way like whatever the like he wants so he observed for one month what he observed uh, let us take two products like bread and jam so he bought bread and jam in the same uh, quantity but jam is not um, I mean the sales of jam is not as that of bread because all the people who are buying bread are not buying jam so then this is what he came to know by looking into the history like who are all the people buying bread and who are all the people buying jam then by looking into this history he find that 50% of the people who are buying bread are buying jam that means 50% of people are not taking 
jam while buying bread so he found this and then what he did he placed both bread and jam together like one beside the other and then he observed for one month and shockingly the sales of jam are also increased 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 by 30% like 80% of the people who are taking bread are taking jam also so what's happening here so the case is what how this 30% is got increased so the people who are also really not having intention to buy jam but after seeing the bre uh, jam along with the bread they are also taking this jam so this is how the sales of jam got increased so in this example as i can say this is not big data but this is what the need of storing this data so by placing the bread and jam together the sales of jam got increased so this is what we'll call it as market basket analysis so what he did by looking into the history history of sales that is of that is what getting insights of the data and what is the necessary action he took placing bread and jam together so with this his business got increased so this is one of the example why people storing the data and what is the need of storing this data hope you understand this example so let me go to next slide what is big data so i'll give you a, a simple definition of big data what is this big data big data is collection of large or complex data sets that cannot be processed by traditional data processing applications so two things you need to consider here is one is collection of large or complex data sets so big data is not a simple data it is collection of large that means huge data and also it might be complex data sets and this data cannot be processed by our traditional data processing applications so what are the traditional data processing applications this is our relational databases or relational tables so this big data cannot be processed by our relational database management systems rdbms so this type of data we can call it as big data big data is collection of large or complex data sets that cannot be processed by our traditional data processing applications okay next big data applications now i will discuss on some of the use cases where this big data is playing significant role the first one here, here is e commercial websites so there are a lot of e-commercial websites like amazon flipkart ebay all are all are a very good e-commercial websites so if you consider amazon in amazon if you buy something it will be stored in rdbms like relational database so but while you are searching for that project a uh, product you'll be getting a lot of recommendations like you can uh, getting uh, different products similar kind of products like if you are searching for a mobile you will be getting lot of recommendations of different mobiles likewise so how you are getting these recommendations you might search for those products before or most of the users might search for that product so what amazon is doing how this amazon is showing recommendations to you so what it will do is it will store all this search data like whatever the people will search or what you search 
when you are uh, searching for a particular product so all this search data will be stored by this Amazon and what it will do this stored data will be processed by the Amazon and by processing this data it will show some of the recommendations where they are storing this big data or the data which is generated by searches of the users and they can't store this data in RDBMS because this is not a business data sorry because this is not a business data and you can't store this data in RDBMS and it, you can't process this data also so because why you can't store this in RDBMS is the main reason is in a relational database will have a concept called schema on write schema on write what it means while inserting the data into database it will check for the data types of the data like if it is in the proper format then only it will insert the data suppose if you have an employee information so there is employee name and employee salary so while you are inserting the data into the database or data into table it will first search whether the salary is in digits or not is in numbers or not so if it is in numbers then only it will insert the data into database otherwise it won't it won't accept so this is what we will call it as validation schema on write checking schema before writing into database so because of this schema on write we can't store this search data into RDBMS because it will take more time and as this search data is very huge it will take a very large amount of time so this is and this search data is what unstructured data which we can call it as big data so this is how the Amazon is storing this search data that is unstructured data and by processing this data it is showing some of the recommendations so how it is storing where it is storing that I will uh, explain you later so but this is how Amazon is processing the search data and give you recommendations and let me go for the next example that is social networking websites so nowadays social networking websites are also generating very huge amount of data Facebook Google Twitter Instagram and uh, these all so let me consider Facebook here Facebook generates almost 500 terabytes per day it might be more than that so which is very huge and this data may be in the form of likes posts images videos and so on it might be any format so why this Facebook storing this much amount of data what is the use of storing this data so before uh, knowing about that so did you ever have this question like how Facebook is getting money so Facebook is getting money basically from advertisers this is not only the source but this is one of the major source source of income from advertisers it will get money so what this advertisers will do they'll come to Facebook and they want some advertisement to be shown to a particular group of people only not all the people so this is what the difference between target marketing and global marketing global marketing means you will just simply show the ad to all the people but target marketing is what showing or presenting the advertisement to a particular group of people only because they are the targeted people I'll simply quote you an example here an advertiser who want to advertise about a football kit or football football kits like shows something other than that so that advertiser came to Facebook and asked like this I want the men who love to play football 
and who are who are under 25 so i want to show my advertisement to these people only so what facebook will do based on our posts likes and our historical data it will get the people with the requirement like men who love to play football and who are under 25 and this facebook wa what it will do it will show that advertisement to those people only so this is what target marketing so based on the number of people only the advertiser will pay to facebook so this is how facebook is getting money so what is the relation of the big data here with the facebook so facebook is storing this data which data posts likes images videos something like that so with this data this facebook is getting insights of the people and showing recommend uh, recommendations or advertisements to the people and this is how it is getting the money so this is how the facebook is using big data it is storing all this data and anal an analyzing this data and give the results and based on the results the advertisements advertisements will be shown the next one is cc cameras a uh, cc tvs so if you see in the world the number of cc cameras also increase hugely so the data generated from this cc cameras are also very huge so which is uh, i mean this data will be in the form of videos and this is also big data and analytics can be applied on this data and this will be mostly used in crime department to track some of the crimes happen in the uh, what in the past and the next one healthcare industry so in healthcare industry also this big data analytics will be used so I will give you a simple example here also. Suppose every hospital will have patient information. Every hospital will have patient, patient information like disease, medicine given to that uh, disease and what is the cost of it and in, in how many days it is cured. Suppose every hospital have the information of patients like this. And if all the hospitals in the country store the data somewhere like in one place and there we can do analytics for each disease so suppose uh, all the data like what 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 is the disease what is the medicine given what is the cost of it in how in how many days it got cured so with this how how the analytics can be performed and what is the use I will tell you for each disease we can get best solution based on the situation like it may be cost or time money or time if someone wants to cure early everybody wants to cure early that is obvious but the I mean the person can afford that medicine or not so suppose we can just tell the uh, I mean we can just get the best machine uh, sorry the best medicine for that particular disease in an affordable cost so if they can afford we can give the costliest medicine and which can cure very early I mean uh, in very less time otherwise if they if they can't afford that much and we, uh, that much amount of money we can give the medicine in the affordable cost which can cure in the best possible way so this is how in healthcare industry also we can perform the analytics on the big data hope you are clear about this next one airplane data so it's definitely not about passengers data 
it is about some other data what the data is i heard like airplanes have nearly 6000 sensors in their wings so what this sensors will do they will generate a very huge amount of data and with this data we can track the flight if it is missed or also it can show the instant new paths to the pilot to reach the destina destination by using a very less fuel so these are what the some of the advantages of big data analytics like in airplane so with this sensor data we can get a uh, different conclusions like if it is missed we can track the flight and we can get the uh, shortest paths to the destination this is how it will be used in airplanes the last one here is satellite data so it is also very huge data about the atmosphere and weather and it also consi uh, consists of data about other planets and our researchers are doing a lot of analytics on this data and getting some recommendations out of it hope you are clear about all these examples of big data analytics I'm going to the next slide characteristics of big data so how can we say that a uh, data is big data or not so based on these characters characteristics we can easily say whether the data is big data or not so the first one is volume as the name big data says big means a very huge data the size of the data is very huge the size is in the form of terabytes or exabytes which can be which needs to be processed so it, this is also simply we can say data at rest the second one is velocity with how much speed or with how much velocity the data is generating here I can quote the best example is Facebook so per day it will generate almost 500 terabytes of data so it's almost like streaming data so in milliseconds you need to respond that means you need to give results in milliseconds or seconds by processing this data so we, this type of data like the data which is generating with high velocity is also can be uh, called as big data the next one is variety so the data may be in different formats like structured, unstructured, text, multimedia, multimedia means it will cover all the images, videos, audios, everything. So these are all different varieties of data. So what are all these varieties of data? So before uh, knowing about these all characteristics of data, so what are all the different varieties of data we will have? The, the first one is structured data structured data means the data which is well organized so the best example is relational tables like the data will be in the form of rows and columns so it is well organized and they will have different I mean the data in the columns will have a particular data types so it is well organized so this type of data will call it as structured data the next one is semi structured data it is not completely organized like tables it is, it is somewhat organized so it but it won't have any data types or any validations kind of things so the best examples here are uh, xml data or json data and the last one is unstructured data unstructured data means it won't have any particular format and there will be no validations on this data so this data might be in any form like it might be text data or it might be multimedia data like images audios videos or it might be any graph data 
so these are all comes under unstructured data so basically the data will be covered in one of these three formats of data three forms of data so which type of this data can be called as big data structured data or semi structured data or unstructured data generally any type of data can be big data but the data must be huge like if it is structured data it must be huge but if it is unstructured data we can simply say that it is big data without considering the amount of data because this unstructured data cannot be processed by our relational databases so even though the structured data can be processed by relational database but if it is very huge it will be difficult to process in relational database again so the data will be in many forms and in many uh, this many forms of data we can call it as big data the last one is veracity veracity is what data in doubt that means uncertainty due to data inconsistency and incompleteness so data inconsistency that means that the data is not consistent Me means it is it will be different in different places or it might be incompleteness that means all the referred data might not be available some of the data might be available and some of the data might be missing and these types of data can also be considered big data because sometimes we need to process this kind of data also so these characteristics can be called as four v's of big data volume which we can call it as data addressed velocity data in motion variety data in many forms veracity data in doubt so these are the four v's of big data so based on these characteristics we can say whether the data is big data or not and based on the varieties which i told you already you can quickly answer which of these uh, examples are comes under which of the varieties of data like what is the data type or what is the variety of the data the first one is graph data so graph data is which variety of data like is it structured data or unstructured data or is it semi structured data so graph data is which type of data yes it is unstructured data because it cannot be stored in our relational database and the next one is a table a well organized table so this is an example of employee table it consists of employee name department gender and which country and how much is the salary of each employee so this is which variety of data yes this is structured data because it is well organized in a table this is a relational database table next books books data which is in the form of xml so this is which variety of data yes this is semi structured data because the xml data and json data is categorized into semi structured data and the next one next one is uh, logs generating from a particular application so this is we can consider as text data so which variety of data it is so yes it definitely it is unstructured data the text data will be considered as unstructured data and the next one audio audio file like mp3 or different audio files so if we want to store this audio data and first which which type of data it is yes it is unstructured data we can't store this audio data in our relational database 
and the last one is PDF so PDF format data yes PDF format data is what text data and text data again will be considered as unstructured data so these are the some of the examples hope you are clear about different varieties of data and which can be considered as big data and which cannot be okay now you are clear about what big data is and where to store all this big data is so before knowing about storing storing is one of the problem I mean to store huge amount of data we need some machines and before uh, knowing about all the storage things let me go for processing things reading data with single machines yes you we have four terabytes of data and this machine has the speed of 100 megabytes per second so this machine need to process 4 terabytes of data and the IO channel is having the speed of 100 megabytes per second so how much time it will take to process this 4 terabytes of data can you please calculate it now I'll wait yes so the calculation here is very simple 4 terabytes divided by 100 megabytes per second which will give you the time here 4 terabytes you will convert this terabytes into megabytes because the speed is in megabytes per second so 4 terabytes into 1024 gigabytes in 2024 to convert into megabytes so 4 in 4 into 1024 into 1024 divided by 100 megabytes per second I want the result in minutes so I am also dividing by 60 again that is 100 into 60 so approximately I am getting 700 minutes so to process 4 terabytes of data with a single machine having speed of 100 megabytes per second it require 700 minutes okay so if you process with single machine this is the time you have okay so parallel processing what if you want to process with different machines why you want to process with different machines because if you process parallelly we can process very fast I will show you the calculations here so what's here to process 4 terabytes of data with 100 megabytes per second you have processed it in 700 mi minutes that is 11 hours 40 minutes so what if you want to process this data with 4 parallel machines so before processing parallelly what you need to do first you need to consider 4 machines and you need to distribute this 4 terabytes of data equally into 4 machines like 1 terabyte, 1 terabyte, 1 terabyte, 1 terabyte so now this 4 terabytes of data will be distributed to 4 devices parallelly like 1 terabyte, 1 terabyte, 1 terabyte and each machine can process the data with 100 megabytes per second so each machine need to process 1 terabytes of data with 100 megabytes per second so how much time it will take for the first machine to process 1 terabyte so that is 175 minutes so you can calculate like 1 terabyte into 1024 into 1024 divided by 100 into 60 as simply you can do it as for 4 terabytes it required 700 minutes for 1 terabyte it will be 700 by 4 simply it is 175 minutes so if it took 175 minutes for the first machine it also will take 175 for the second 
175 for third machine and 175 for fourth machine. So in how much time this four data, four terabytes of data can be processed by parallelly running these four machines or by parallelly processing with these four machines. So it will be 175 minutes. It is not 700 minutes because it run these four machines runs parallelly. That means all the four machines starts at the same time and they have finished processing of this whole data in 175 minutes. So as a whole we can say the speed with which the data is processed is 400 megabytes per second and the time is 175 minutes. Okay, hope you are clear about this parallel processing. So what is the advantages of parallel processing here? In less time you can process more data. So what are the challenges you faced while doing this thing? The first one here is you need to divide and distribute the data into all these four machines. So this is one of the challenge because dividing and distributing are two different things. Hope you know all dividing and distributing. Dividing is what making chunks into one terabyte, one terabyte, one terabyte and distributing is what sending this data sending this one terabyte data into first machine and second terabyte into second machine third terabyte into third machine four terabyte into fourth machine this is what distributing so dividing and distributing is one of the major challenge the next one is parallel processing so you need to run all these machines parallelly so this is one of the challenge the next one is combining the results so in the previous example it is just reading the data so you know you no need to combine anything i mean you, you are not generating any results so you are not you no need to combine anything but if there is some results out of these machines after processing then you need to combine these results and make it as one so combining the results is also one of the challenge and finally costly servers that means these machines costly machines so if the machines are costly so the cost of the system will be increased so this is also one of the challenge anyway the cost is not a developer problem or an employees problem it is a management problem but dividing and distributing parallel processing combining these are all the headaches of a developer what this ladder shows so how to overcome these challenges so how to overcome these challenges so the solution to overcome all these challenges is Hadoop Hadoop is not only the solution there are so many solutions I can say one of the solution is Hadoop so what is Hadoop I will give you a brief introduction or a brief definition of Hadoop. Apache Hadoop is an open source software framework for distributed storage and distributed processing of very large data sets on clusters of commodity hardware. A big definition. So I will break this definition into three parts so that we can understand very easily. Right? So the first one is open source software framework. Hadoop is an open source software framework. That means the software is for free. Anyone can use it. Anyone can go to Apache website and download this Hadoop software and can use it for free. So this is what an advantage open source software framework. The second one is distributed storage and distributed processing. I already explained what is distributing so distributed storage that means storing this data 
parallelly into different machines storing in parallelly is what distributed storage and distributed processing is also processing in parallelly so storing the data parallelly and processing the data parallelly is what done by hadoop and the last one is this data will be stored and processed on clusters of commodity hardware so cluster what is a cluster cluster is simply a group of machines a network of machines so clusters of commodity hardware and this cluster formed by commodity hardware commodity means cheaper hardware so hadoop is an open source software framework and it makes sure that the da data will be stored and processed in a distributed manner and it will store the data on clusters of commodity hardware so so let us check with your challenges what are the challenges you face first distributed storage and distributed processing so this will be take care by hadoop the second one is parallel processing this is also will take care by hadoop the third thing third thing is combining the results so it will also take care by hadoop framework and finally costly servers so as you are using commodity hardware here so this is also overcome so this is simply a definition of hadoop apache hadoop is an open source software framework for distributed storage and distributed processing of very large data sets on clusters of commodity hardware hope all of you are clear about this definition of big data and now what this hadoop consists of as i explained you in the definition storage and processing is what two major things here so the core of hadoop consists of two things one is hdfs hadoop distributed file system the second one is map reduce so as i already told you two things one is for storage and one is for processing so hdfs is what storage part and map reduce is what processing part i'll explain these are the two major concepts of hadoop <coughs> sorry so i'll explain these two things in our regular classes and let me go for next slide why hadoop that means what is the importance of hadoop so the first one is ability to store that means it can store and process huge amounts of any kind of data very quickly it can process very quickly with data volumes of sorry Mm, with data volumes and varieties constantly increasing especially from social media and internet of things this is the key key consideration like processing any kind of data and processing very huge data quickly this is what a need in this generation like the especially from social media and internet of things these are the things which are generating data uh, very fastly nowadays and that is what hadoop is doing it is processing very fast the next computing power hadoop's distributed computing model processing data very fast processing this data big data is very fast because of this parallel processing that is what we'll call it as distributed processing so and you can also increase the speed of processing that is the more computing nodes you have the more processing power you have so that is if you have more machines to process you can process data parallelly and the processing power is more that means in very less time you can process the data the next one is fault tolerance so hadoop is having data and application processing protected against hardware failure so it is protected against hardware failure even if a node if a, even if a node goes down that means if, even if a node failed or if it is crashed as you are using a uh, commodity hardware hardware there is a high chance of
crashing the machine so what if a node or a machine got failed or uh, crashed so the jobs the hadoop jobs are automatically redirected to other machines or other nodes to make sure that the, that the distributed computing does not fail so this is what the advantages of hadoop so if one node goes down it will be redirected to another node which is having similar data so why it will have similar data because in hadoop will store multiple copies of data that means the same data will be stored into different machines or different nodes so this is what we'll call it as replication replication of data so by this if one of the machine got crash it will take or it will process the data from the next machine so this is the advantages of hadoop advantage of hadoop next one is flexibility so unlike our traditional relational databases you don't have to pre-process data before storing it pre-processing means you will validate the data before storing the data into database as i already told you for an employee salary it will check whether the data is decimal or not it that means it is number or not so before storing the data into database it will check for the validation so unlike this thing unlike this traditional database you no need to pre-process the data before storing into database like before storing into hdfs you can store as much data as you want and decide how to use it later and this data includes unstructured data text data images videos any format so this is what the flexibility we have with hadoop the next one is low cost as i already told you in the definition hadoop is an open source software framework that means the software is for free and also you will have commodity machines commodity hardware so so these are also very cheap so this hadoop is what very cheap the last one is scalability you can easily grow your system to handle more data simply by adding nodes that means if you want to store more data and process more data you can have more machines you can simply add machines whenever required but a little bit administration is required for that so this is how i mean this is what the importance of hadoop hope you are clear about these six points and now i'm going to next slide here i will show you all the components of hadoop eco ecosystem by explaining a simple example so an use case so i'll take again this uh, amazon example so how the recommendations will be shown in amazon website while you are searching for a particular product so what you are doing you are sitting with your laptop in your room and you open amazon website and you are searching for a particular mobile with, a, uh, with your defined features so what you will do while you are searching for a uh, product you will uh, request that amazon web server to give you the data of the products so where this data will be uh, where this data will be stored this will be stored in our relational database that is amazon will have some relational database so this amazon will fetch this data from the relational database and it will be shown to you in the website and by doing some of the operations like searching for a different products and all these things it will generate this web server will generate some logs so we need to process this logs and based on this log data only the recommendations will be shown so this is what our data the log data so we need to take this data into hdfs hadoop distributed file system so how you will get 
So before that, uh, this line, this line just to separate Hadoop ecosystem from other things. Okay. So how to get this log data into HDFS, Hadoop Distributed File System? So in this diagram, Hadoop, Hadoop Distributed File System having some different machines. I just showed you uh, three machines in yellow color. So we need to get this data, this log data into HDFS. How you will get this data? So here we have one tool called Flume. Flume is a data and a data ingestion tool which will get data into HDFS. So it will get the log data and it will store the data in Hadoop distributed file system. Okay, we got the data into Hadoop distributed file system. So but this log data will not have all the information like suppose this log data will have information with the user ID. So that ID, we don't know what is the ID. So with this ID, I want to get some of the user information like where he will store, what is his name. Because in Amazon, the recommendations will be shown based on the location also. Right? So I need to get the location of the user. So this might not be available in logs where it will be available it will be available in relational database because all the user information like username and address and his contact number everything will be there in our relational database okay we need to combine this relational data also and before that i can tell you one thing one more thing that after storing the data in HDFS, we can also query the data from a NoSQL database or NoSQL database language. Suppose we have HBase, it is a NoSQL database. So with this database, we can create some tables or we can create some structures on the data which is stored on HDFS. So HBase is no SQL database. So which can uh, query like, I mean, you can write queries with uh, different forms of data and you can see the results. Yes, let me go back to that situation. I want the location of the user. That means where the user is staying. So I can get this data from a relational database. So how I will, I can get this data. So Flume can't get the data from a relational database. So for this, we are using one more tool called Scoop. Scoop, the name itself says SQL to Hadoop. That means it will transfer the data in a relational database into Hadoop. That is HDFS, Hadoop Distributed File System. And we got all the required information into HDFS. And now we need to process this data. That means we need to get what are all the uh, uh, products searched by the most of the users and that will be shown to the user as recommendations. So we need to get what, what are all the products we need to shown as recommendations. So that processing part will be done by map reduce as i already told you hadoop core consists of two things hdfs for storage and map reduce for processing so it will process this data and it will store these recommendations first in hdfs so from this hdfs2 again we need to take these recommendations or take this data into relational database sometimes we need to take the results into relational database here we need to use again scoop to take the data from Hadoop to relational database. So scoop is a bi-directional data ingestion tool. That means it can transfer data from relational database to Hadoop and Hadoop to relational database also. And from this relational database, we will show the recommendations or Amazon will show the recommendations to the user. So this is how 
the recommendations will be shown to the user that means it will get the logs data into Hadoop with a data ingestion tool called Flume and it will get the data of relational data I mean it, it, it will get the relational data uh, relational data in tables into Hadoop with the component called scoop and the processing part here is MapReduce and we have NoSQL database on top of HDFS which is HBase and with these things we can get the recommendations but the other thing is MapReduce is a processing framework so this MapReduce is written in Java Java language so Java language yeah uh, some of you might know Java Java is what a, li a little bit difficult so to overcome that we have one more component called Hive Hive is an SQL like language that means it is not as difficult as Java so it is an SQL like language you can write queries and it will be again transformed to MapReduce plan and it will process but on high level the programmer no need to I mean the programmer no need to write the code in Java like in MapReduce you can write an SQL que SQL like queries in Hive okay this is what the advantages of Hive the next one is pig pig is again a pre-processing framework so it can also uh, what is pig is a scripting tool like uh, the scripting will be very easy compared to this MapReduce or MapReduce Java so in pig a two line as uh, two lines of code of pig will be equal to 20 lines of Java so this is how simple a pig is so what is the difference be between pig and hive so as I already told you pig is pre-processing framework and it can the name itself says pig pig can eat everything likewise this pig tool can process any type of data but hive hive will have I already told you hive has an SQL like language SQL means structured query language so based on the unstructured data will create structured tables on hive so hive mostly will work on structured data but the, th that is what happening here so if you pre-process or if you have unstructured data processed with pig and after that on pre-processing and I mean after processing of pig data we can create hive tables on, on top of that data so for this we need one more tool called hcatalog hcatalog will be used to communicate between hive and pig and finally we have a, a tool called zookeeper so the name itself says zookeeper what zookeeper will do will coordinate all the uh, animals in the zoo likewise this zookeeper will coordinate all the components of Hadoop ecosystem like scoop, flume, hdfs, map reduce, hbase, hive, pig, hedge catalog all these echoes I mean all these components in the ecosystem will be coordinated by zookeeper hope you are clear about all these components so I will tell you uh, briefly again flume will be a data ingestion tool it will get the log data into HDFS MapReduce is processing framework HDFS is a storage part of Hadoop Scoop is a bi-directional data ingestion tool it will get the data from relational database and it will also get data into relational database from Hadoop and Hive is an SQL like language and pig is a scripting language it is a pre-processing tool hbase is a no sql database hcatalog will be used to communicate between hive and pig and zookeeper will be used to coordinate all these components of hadoop ecosystem and this is what briefly an hadoop ecosystem architecture is so hdfs is what storage part MapReduce is processing part hcatalog is metadata service to communicate between hive and pig HBase, HBase is a NoSQL database, Scoop and Flume are data ingestion tools and Zookeeper is a coordination tool and Wuji which is taking care of workflow and scheduling so this I didn't explain right so I will tell you 
so woozy is what scheduling jobs so if a job consists of some high queries and it might consist of pick queries and it also might consist of map reduce jobs so i need to integrate all these things in a single job so this workflow kind of thing from where to where the data needs to flow this is the workflow and scheduling so you can schedule the jobs daily at a particular time these things so this all the things will be take care by use woozy i mean we can handle with woozy so it is an workflow and scheduling tool and all other things i have already explained so i am promising you all these tools will be explained clearly and the programs everything i'll explain in the regular classes so in place in place of map reduce we can also use spark which is also a processing framework so i'll also i'll also take class on spark as well and thank you for attending the demo thank you very much and if you have any questions you can ask me